Tell me why, why he's treating you like this. This belongs to her. San Diego. Sheriff, I do not want to talk about this woman. You won't talk, she won't talk, I don't know. Sheriff. Three months ago, you wanted to marry Rosa. Now you want to run her out of town. I just don't understand. This is between that woman and myself. It does not concern you. Rosa, there are plenty of other families in the territory. It'd be only too happy to have a housekeeper like you. He can't force you to leave Lincoln. If she doesn't go on that stagecoach now, I will denounce her in public and everyone will know the kind of woman she is. I am not guilty of what you think in your mind. I swear it. You will listen to me! If you believe this terrible thing, may my curse be on you and your family, now and forever! on him. And she killed him. And for that she will die. You're free to go now, Rosa. for a couple of days while I investigated Don Diego's charges against you. And it was just as much to protect you as it was to satisfy him. The boy's death was accidental. You had nothing at all to do with it. Rosa, you're a free woman now. I killed him. I killed Juan. Rosa. Yes. My curse killed him just as if I had shot him with a gun. Ah, it's nonsense and you know it. I will not leave. I will stay in this cell until you punish me. Now, Rosa. I know what I have done. I am guilty of murder and I must be punished. <laughs> What 
are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to drag her out of that cell and throw her out in the street, if that's what you mean. She's a good woman, Patrick. Yeah. Always treated me like a king. Every time I'd visit the Cardenas Hacienda on business for Tuttle, you know, I'd... Uh, I sure hate to see anything happen to her. Nothing well, Billy. Well, I don't know. This uh, Cardenas, I know pretty well. He gets hold of an idea. He ain't nothing going to shake him loose from it. You let Rosa go, he might just come here gunning for her. I know him pretty well, too, Billy. He's a man of culture and refinement. He'd never turn against the law. Yeah, well, maybe. That, that could be. But if... I got a feeling, Patrick. If I were you, I'd move Rosa to another town without letting anyone know it. And then I'd put her on the next stage for the East. Yeah, well, you stay with us till I get back in, Billy. She'll need a friend. Yeah, well, Patrick? I got a message from Cardenas. He wants to talk to me. Probably changed his mind already about Rosa. He loved that woman, Billy. Oh, yeah, you think he still loves her? I might even persuade him to talk to her. Convince her that nobody blames her for the boy's death. The vineyards of Navarre. Even if you do not relish wine, Sheriff, you will like this. We drink to justice. And now about the woman. When will she be brought to trial? Don Diego, you know the law. I've investigated the accident thoroughly. Rosa had nothing to do with it. She's innocent, legally and otherwise. And you intend to release the Bruja? The witch! I know how you feel about Juan's death, but you're a rational man. You know just as well as I do there's no such thing as a witch or a witch's curse. Did you not hear her speak the words that put the curse on me and on those of my flesh? Did you not see my son killed before your eyes? How can you not believe in the evil power of the Bruja? Don Diego, a dog, spoke those horses. They panicked and caused the accident. It had nothing to do with an imaginary curse. How little you know of the dark world, Senor Garrett. The evil spirit of that woman entered the body of the dog. That is how she killed my son. Patron? Yes. It is Senor Ramon. He has returned. Send him to me. My father? You are welcome in the house of your father. Ramon? Sheriff. Show my son to his room. You will want to wash away the dust of the road. We will talk of family matters later. Three months ago, he left his house to become a wanderer, a common trail hand. But now he has heard of the curse of the Bruja and he has returned. I know my son. You will avenge his brother. Don Diego, nobody's going to avenge anything. All this talk about Brujas and curses is straight out of the Dark Ages. Rose is innocent. I'm the law here and the law protector. Maybe you can understand that. You speak as if your law were the only law. My people walked this earth, these mountains. A century before, your people, even you, there was such a place. There is a long memory in our family of the trial in 1546 of our ancestor, Captain Garcia. The charge? That he burned a Pueblo medicine man at the stake, his defense, that the shaman had put a curse upon him. Our ancestor went to prison for his defense of the bloodline. So do not threaten me, Sheriff, with your laws or your prison. I am of a family of Garcia Lopez de Cardenas, and we will deal with this Bruja, this curse, in our own way. Cardenas means trouble. There's no sense sitting here waiting for it. What are you going to do?
Rosa, Rosa, if we ride most of the night, we can reach Roswell by morning. There's an eastbound stagecoach due out of there at noon tomorrow, and you're going to be on that stage. What do you care what happens to me? I'm a murderess. Now look, Rosa, I don't care what kind of imaginary guilt you've got in your head. To me, you're innocent. And I intend to see that you go free whether you want to or not. Now, please, don't make me drag you out of this cell. Sure, I am innocent. I'm sure. I'll be with you. Now, better if you stay here and make sure Cardenas doesn't find out she's left and right out after us. She ain't up there. Where is she? Her guess is as good as mine. I suggest that you tell us where! Oh, east, west, north, south. You, uh, you take your choice, sir. Get a stage leaving Roswell for the east noon tomorrow. Would that be a good choice, Senor Bonnie? Well, every man to his own wild goose, Senor. <laughs> Lock him in the cell upstairs. somewhere between here and Roswell. We will find Garrett. And that Bruja, that witch. Need some rest. You've been riding most of the night. Uh, why don't you stretch out here by the fire? We'll wait till dawn. Two or three hours ride yet from here to Roswell. Look, why don't you rest? There can be no rest for a woman like me. Rosa. You're making a great mistake. And I must warn you now before it is too late. If you set me free, no one can tell what evil I will do. Look, Rosa, I don't know who or what put such a fool idea into your head. But I refuse to believe that you're anything but a grief-stricken woman who for no reason at all blames herself for the death of the Cardenas boy. You're a good man, but you're wrong. And Don Diego is right. I am a bruja. A witch. Empire. Right across the valley, you can barely see it. Rosa, all this nonsense about witches. I know. You will say I am not a bruja. But there's the world you do not understand. A world of darkness. 
And that is my world. Rosa. When I was 18, and the dark shadow touched my young husband, Armando, and he died. He died of a fever on a wagon train going west, and I was left alone in a strange land with a child in my arms. Maria. My Maria is a young girl now. She stays with the Sisters of Mercy in a convent near San Luis. Perhaps, perhaps Maria is the reason why I accepted Don Diego's proposal. He could help me protect my child. But I could not go through with the marriage. I had to tell him I loved someone else. A man who left me without even a goodbye. I did not know this would hurt Don Diego. He accused me of betraying him with other men, but that was not so. There had been no other, only this one silent love, and this I kept in my heart. But he would not believe me. That is why he had to hurt me. And in that moment of anger, I cast the shadow again on the boy, on Juan. And he died. He died because I have the power. Because I am a bruja. Rosa, listen to My me. My great, great grandmother was burned for witchcraft. Ever since then, every girl child born in the bloodline has been cursed with the gift of occult powers. Ever since I was a little one, my grandmother made me understand what it was to be a bruja, to cast mala sombra, the evil shadow, over the lives of all who would know me. I have fought against a shadow. It's hopeless. Saria has told me. Just as the blood became cursed when my great-great-grandmother was born, so the curses must be lifted by the flame. If I die the death of a witch, Maria might be saved! Rosa! Rosa! Please! Never. Let me go! Rosa! Let me go! Please! Rosa, never do that again, never! Please! You are not a bruja! I must save myself! You can't save your child. Rosa, let me prove to you that all of this is a bad dream. Put your spell on me. You see that you have no such black powers. Put your curse on me now, Rosa. Tell me I'll die before morning. I could never do that. But can't you see the way you are, dead or alive? You condemn the child to live in your dark, superstitious world. You can't love her very much. Do not say such a thing. If you did, you try anything to save her. I love her more than my life. Then put your curse on me, Rosa. Say the words now. You'll see the words mean nothing. You do not know. Do it for Maria now, Rosa. I warn you. Now, Rosa, say the words. May my curse be on you. You will die before the sun rises. Sheriff, the next bullet will find your heart. If you do not surrender the prisoner to us, throw your gun into the open. Quickly. Ramon, I'm sorry. 
I would do anything to atone for the death of your brother, even if I did cast the shadow on him. When I heard about Juan's death, I, I, I tried to hate you. But now, seeing you like this again, I, I, I know you had nothing to do with my brother's death. Ramon! Father, now you will listen to me. She is not a bruja. Her curse did not kill Juan. You do not know! I know! Because I love her. When I went away, without a word to you, my father, it was because I... I knew then that I loved her. And I was afraid she was beginning to love me. I had hurt you enough, my father. To take your woman would have been too much. I... I swore to stay away. Forever. She married you. But now I... You will go with me. To San Luis. To Maria and we will be married, huh? You fool! Graciously, the Bruja will destroy the family by destroying you. Father! What? Ramon, your father is right. I could never marry you. I am a cursed woman. Rosa. The first light. Dawn. I'm still alive, Rosa. Your dark powers are all imagination. I forced Rosa to put her curse on me. Now she knows she's not a witch. She cannot speak words and make someone die. You're free, Rosa. You're free now to live. Gracias, Senor Garrett. And gracias from me, too. My father, when I return one day with Rosa, I pray that I will be welcome in the house of my father. many things. Maybe it'll change the way you feel. I was so afraid when you didn't come. I, I didn't know what... All right. I'm here now. What do you want? Jack, I'm your wife. I can't go, go on living with Pa, sneaking off to see you. I've kept it secret as long as I can. Please, Jack, let's tell Pa. Maybe you should listen to the old fool. Been figuring I'd head up Wyoming way. I'm not coming back. But what about... What about me? Oh.
Ma'am, this isn't very safe country for a woman out alone. That's the only reason I... Just go away, you hear me? Ma'am, I'm Sheriff Pat Garrett of Lincoln County. If there's any trouble, if there's any way I can help... No, I... Yeah, hold on. No, will you please? Please, go away! She's wounded. A bullet grazed her bed. I did what I could for her, but she needs a doctor. Oh, my husband died three months ago. You knew that, didn't you, Pat? Yes, I'm sorry, but I'd heard a new man had taken over his practice. Well, Dr. Parsons was due here yesterday, but... There's another doctor for 50 miles, well, I I'll see what I can do. I've helped my husband often enough. Hey, give me a hand. We'll take her inside. Yeah, I'll take him. Mrs. Baines? Come on in. We've been hoping you'd get here. I'm Sheriff Pat Garrett. There's a girl inside trying to shoot herself. She needs you. Oh, here, Dr. Parsons. How long has she been unconscious? About four hours. She moved at all? No. What's on this compress? An ointment my husband always used. It helps stop bleeding. What's in it? Well, I'm not sure. He prepared it himself, and there was still some you left. You don't on... even know what you put on the wound? Now, just a minute. My husband... I'm going to need some hot water to clean the wound and to wash my hands. Would you get it, please? Of course. Doctor, I know Mrs. Baines meant to do the right thing, and her husband was a good doctor. Oh, was he, Sheriff? Well, I doubt if there's a good doctor west of the Mississippi, except possibly me. And I've got a lot to learn. You're modest as well as rotten tempered. Just honest. I graduated from medical school a year ago. That means I've had the benefit of knowing what's happened in medicine the last five years. Do you know what's happened? Almost everything that doctors have been practicing for a thousand years has been proved wrong. We don't bleed our patients half to death now to get rid of the bad blood. And we don't raise blisters on the skin to draw out all the body poisons. We don't dose them with vile concoctions handed down from the dark ages. I say we. The doctors out here, they've been here for 20 or 30 years. They're a little better than frauds. But they don't have any laws out here to keep them from practicing, from butchering their fellow man. And Dr. Baines never butchered anyone. Then he's the exception. What made you decide to come west? Well, you could call it my humanitarian dedication. Or you could say that... Patients back east weren't sick enough to put up with my charming personality. In this town, if they want a doctor, I'm it. Now, if you'll excuse me, Sheriff, I'd like to examine the patient. <laughs> Sorry, cocksure, pig-headed young man in my life. Coming in here like he was... If it weren't for that girl in there, I... Hey, he's probably just all tired out from the long ride into town. Well, will you find his own way around? I'll be packed and gone by tomorrow. I'm thankful Edward isn't here to see him take over. How is you, Doctor? Well, the wound's going to be all right, but I gave her a complete examination, and, uh, what do you know about her, Miss Baines? Well, nothing, except that I've seen her around town. You ever come see your husband? No, why? She's pregnant. What? Seven or eight months. But she doesn't look as if she... I know, but she bound and strapped herself so that it wouldn't show. Oh, she could have killed a child. Well, it's alive. 
The heart beats sound. Although I doubt it could have lived much longer under those conditions. Why did you stop me? Be quiet and save your strength. I don't care. I... Well, you better start caring for your baby, if not for yourself. I took the bindings off and you're going to leave them off. No. You strap yourself up again like that and you'll kill that baby. I don't care. I don't want it. I don't want it. Well, that baby has a right to be born whether you want it or not. It's his baby and I hate it. I hate everything about him. Now go away. Please go away. Oh, let the girl alone. She doesn't know what she's saying. I'll stay here till she calms down. She's right, doctor. You can't talk to her while she's like this. All right, I'll give her a set of time to talk to him later. Well, I haven't made much of a success out of myself since I come to this town, have I, Sheriff? Best day. Managed to antagonize everyone I met, including you. The sedative finally took effect. She seems to be drifting out to sleep now. Did you find out anything about her? No. No, but I think I've placed her. I'm almost positive she's Judd Marlowe's daughter. Her name's Mary. Judd Marlowe? Oh, he has a ranch somewhere up in the valley. He hardly ever comes into town. Well, maybe we ought to talk to him and find out. I won't be able to help you. I don't want your help. I don't want anything. Now just let me do it. I don't want the baby. I don't want to live. What do you think you're doing? Stay out of this. Now look, you tell me what's going on. This is my patient. Now you keep your hands off of me. You heard him, Santi. Who does he think he is coming in here stirring up trouble? What kind of a doctor is he? Santi, this is none of your business. Now everybody, move along. Come on, out of the way. I don't know about the rest of you, but that doctor won't be around here very long if it's up to me. Well, I've given her a stronger sedative. She'll have trouble fighting that off. It will be best to have someone watch her close. I'll stay with her tonight. Well, that'll help, Miss Baines. She needs someone close to her. Maybe her father can help. If we can only reach her father. I know the road. If I start right now, I can have him here early tomorrow. Parsons is here, Mary. Everything will be fine. Doctor, give me something. <laughs> Let me die. I don't want any more pain. Please, I want to die. Chloroform. Now just breathe. Breathe deeply. Breathe hard. Then you believe in easing a woman's birth pains? Of course I do much as I can. Although it slows up the birth, I just hope this baby doesn't come too early. His heartbeat is around 180. Normal's about 120, isn't it? I've been examining, Miss Baines. Fast, there's pain, slight hemorrhage. 
placenta separated prematurely. It's caused by binding yourself up like that. Internal bleeding. There's nothing you can do, is there? She and the baby will both die. Could be in hours. At the most a day. If I was just back east at a hospital, even then. Miss Baines. Miss Baines, I want to try something. I'm going to need a large one. The largest room in town. And some acid. Carbolic acid. Every gallon I can get my hands on. I got my instruments. I'll do all I can. Is, is there anybody else here in town that could help us? Well, there's, there's only the barber, but all he does is pull teeth. Maybe he knows something about anesthesia. I can have it done by tomorrow, by noon. Can't wait any longer than that. You're going to operate. Yes, I am, Miss Baines. Mary's father, Mr. Morrow. Where is she? Upstairs. Some men are bringing her down. The doctor's with her. He's... All right, bring her down easy. Come on, watch the step. Oh, Mary. Mary. Oh, I, I didn't want you to... We looked everywhere for you. Why didn't you tell us? After I ran off, I couldn't. All right, men, let's go. Take her on over there. I'm sorry, mister, but this is urgent. Where are you taking her? I'm glad you got here in time. You can give the legal permission for the operation. Come on, Miss Bain. Operation? She's having a baby, isn't she? What do you mean, operation? Well, I'm going to have to attempt a cesarean section on your daughter. What's that? What are you talking about? I'm going to have to take the baby. Now, by surgery, or it'll die. Surgery? You mean you're going to cut my gal open? That's right. I never heard of such a thing. I don't want you cutting on my daughter. Well, look, I don't care what you want. I know what has to be done. Look. Women have been having babies around here for a long time. She'll have that baby like they do. I already told you she can't have it that way. If I don't operate, the baby will die. They'll both die. I got no way of knowing that's right or not. That's just your opinion. I heard of too many people dying under the knives of some fool doctor. I'm taking her home. Somebody, I'll get some no, doctor and pass her to look at. Look, I can't sacrifice that girl's life for this man's ignorance. Doc, I want to help you, but legally you need his permission. All right. You can charge me with murder if she dies. That's the law, isn't it? Come on, Mr. Bain. Sheriff, you better stop him or I will. Mr. Marlow, he says he has to do this. I believe him. I want you to sponge everything down with carbolic acid solution. Just let it soak in. I'll take care of the operating table and the patient myself. Why all the carbolic acid, Doc? Well, sometimes infections set in after an operation. We don't know why. But we do know that the use of carbolic acids help prevent those infections. Wait, take it easy on the chloroform. Just a little at a time. Dr. Parsons, a cesarean section can save the baby. But the mother... I know. There have been 80 known sections attempted in the country. Most of the mothers have died. Then why are you trying it? Don't think her father won't bring murder charges. He will. And a jury of people from around here will back him up. You think I should let her and the baby both die? And just do nothing? No. But if the chances... There's a good chance of succeeding too, Miss Baines. I watched a new technique demonstrated by a Dr. Sanger. That's the method I'm going to try today. You wash her down with a solution. I'll soak the blankets. You may that's fine. Just wait outside and keep the others out. Somehow, I never thought I'd be operating in a saloon. We'd better get started, Miss Bain. You let him go ahead? He's in there cutting on her? Marlowe, I couldn't take responsibility for stopping him. It's not up to you. She's my daughter. And he got a right to say what's done to his own girl? Santee, you stay out of this. You don't know a thing about it. I know that fool doctor's in there trying something none of us ever heard of. Even her father don't want it done. Get out of the way, Garrett. 
I'm going in there before it's too late. You stay right here. Well, if you ain't man enough to stop this thing, maybe we are. How about it? Yeah. I don't want to have to draw this gun. Down in the basement in the cold room. All right, you two may go down and get it and crush it and bring it back to me. Hurry. What's the matter, is it? My girl's dying. Oh, well, let me go. It's written all over your face. My girl's dying, isn't she? Marlowe, turn him loose. Leave him alone, Garrett. He's got a right. You killed her. You're a butcher. Now, look, she's not dead, but she will die if I don't get back in there. You're not keeping me away from her now? It's up to us to stop this butcher. Everybody! Let's go. What are you doing? Get out of here! You'll mess up this room with your filth! Go on, get out of here! I'll arrest every one of you if that's what it takes. You'll have to shoot to do that, Garrett. We're staying unless you want to kill all of us. Keep him away from this table, Garrett. Any one of you takes another step into this room, I'll shoot. Shut up. Put it down here. Come on, come on. so much blood. before I'm back up this way again. Well, they're doing just fine up there, all three of them. I'm just saying goodbye, Mr. Baines. It's been good knowing you all these years, Pat. 
On your way, would you ask Seth to pick up my things this afternoon? I don't want to miss that stage east. <clears throat> Miss Bain, uh, you have something important waiting for you back east? Yes. Yes, all my relatives are back in Philadelphia. They're important. I'll be staying with them. Well, that uh, isn't what I meant exactly. Uh, what I mean is, uh, you ought to, you ought to stay here. Uh, don't you think so, Pat? Oh, yes. Yeah. You want me to stay on here with you? Well, that's what I, I said, isn't it? Do you think you need me? <laughs> it's not that... Uh, well, you do. You know a great deal about medicine, Doctor. But almost nothing about people. Just a minute. The head and the heart make a doctor. Now, if... If you think you have something to learn about people... from the example of a doctor like my husband... I'll be glad to stay. I... I, uh... took the liberty of putting his picture back up. Uh, well, somehow, I, uh, the room just... Uh, didn't seem right without him. Pat, uh, listen, thanks for everything. Good luck, Doc. Good luck to you, too, Mrs. Vance. town after six days, and all you can say is morning, Patrick. Well, if you're wondering, I, uh, lost my old pony about five days ago, Patrick, uh, up in Baker's Canyon. I had a landslide up there. Uh-huh. Yeah. I guess I can be glad it didn't take my horse. I left it down here at Traeger's stable to have it tended to. I had a bad hoof or something. Uh-huh. Yeah. And hey, what about that cattle Tundle sends you up to Rollins to get? Oh, yeah, I, I never got there. I've been... I've been laid up with a twisted ankle all this time. Don't tell me, old... Uh, don't tell me, old Tundle's all head up on account of I've been laid up all this time. Oh, no, no, no. He's just been worried, that's all. That's more than I can say with the people around here. Of course, you are... Should have come looking for me, Patrick. That angle got well in a hurry, didn't it, Billy? Especially with all that walking you've been doing. You got any more questions, Patrick? Traeger, it looks, uh, looks real good. You got the swelling down, everything. Uh, you say one dollar? Yep. That's what I thought. Much obliged. Uh, see, I, uh, I got a thing here. A fellow gentleman with horses like you are. I was wondering if you could maybe fix this up for me. 
Could be. Fixed Miss Tompkins' false teeth last week while she waited. Let me get my glasses and a pair of pliers. No, I'll tell you what, I'm real thirsty. I've been riding a long ways. I'll uh, be over to the saloon over here. Uh, can you uh, watch my rifle for me there? And, uh, and don't scratch it. I'll have you hide. Something valuable, huh, Billy? Just get a fix, Mr. Traeger. Give me a beer, Charlie. If you didn't see her yourself, I thought someone else might have mentioned her. He's looking for a runaway girl. Maybe you've seen her, sir. I just got in. Cross on the road. A rather pretty girl. About 19. Red hair, green eyes. Wearing a calico dress. I've been searching for her for over a week now. Riding my buggy from town to town. Where'd you start from? Milford Junction, 50 miles south. What are you going to do when you find her? I'm going to teach her lessons she'll always remember. She's a godless girl, even though she is my own. She belongs in a nunnery. That's where I'm going to put her. Once I lay my hands on her again. There she is, Billy. Good as new. Glad you get that. It's her necklace. You got your hands on it. What did you do with my daughter? I lost her. You see, I knew she was scared, running from someone. I saved her life five days ago. A horse fell over a cliff with her, up in Baker Canyon. I took her to a trapper's cabin. There was no one there to help us. Just her and me. That was five days ago. I stayed there all this time. I don't believe your story, boy. How'd you get that blood stain on your shirt? I'm telling you the truth, mister. And why'd you lie to me about losing your horse, Billy? I didn't want to have to do any explaining, Patrick. This was my business. Now it's mine. What about the blood stain? Well, I got it when I killed some rabbits. So I was taking care of the girl. And I've been looking for her ever since she disappeared from the cabin night before last. She just left us to unlock it. Looking how? 
The best I could, mister. Only well, nobody around here had heard of her. All she left me was her name. What name? Lily Varnell. Lily Varnell? Who you fooling, boy? Well, that's her name. I mean, that's what she told me. I don't believe she ever told it to you. Where'd she pick a name like Lily Varnell? Worst woman I ever saw in my life. Got run out of Milford a month ago. Well, maybe she lied to me, mister, because she didn't want you to find her. You're the one who's lying. I say you never knew my daughter's name. Because you killed her. For her necklace. I'm ordering you to put this man in jail. He's going to be tried for the murder of my daughter, Phoebe. Phoebe Canfield. I'm ordering you, Sheriff. Mr. Canfield, nobody orders me. Let you and me go over to my office, Billy. Are you taking my gun, Patrick? I didn't say anything about taking a gun. Just taking a walk. Come on. Phoebe Canfield, that's a pretty name. That's right. Billy, what I don't understand is why you went to so much trouble to lie. I don't know. What other reason could I give, Patrick, to explain being away for six days? I was away for six days. I didn't want to have to tell a story. I didn't want people around here to... To know about Phoebe? But Billy, you could have done it a lot easier. And sometimes I guess a man doesn't think real straight when he gets mixed up with a woman. I don't know. Don't say it like that. But in five days, she never gave you her right name. I mean, you know, you don't have a lot of friends around here to make it easier for you if it gets to a jury. How's this stinking town? No worse than any other town. People go by past performances. Well, I'll tell you, Patrick, I love that girl. That's what I had to be sure of. You wanted to be sure of what? I'd quiet down if I were you, Mr. Cashfield. I only want to find out what the boy knows about my daughter. I told you I don't know anything, Canfield. Did you ever see a bad sea grow, Mr. Garrett? Beautiful flower. Something wrong with it. Destined for a violent end, even from the time of its birth. Why don't you just shut up about her? You have quite a temper, haven't you? All those shooting scrapes you've been in. Take it easy, Mr. Canfield. Perhaps it was my fault. Raising her without a mother. But then, some men get married only once. No one suits them after that. What's your name, boy? His name is William Bonney. William H. Bonney. I'll remember that for your grave marker. What did you do with my daughter's body, Mr. Bonnie? You're a dirty liar. That's what she called me. And all I was trying to do was keep her from running away. From taunting men with her sweet talk. And begging him into believing that she needed protection against an unreasonable father. Teasing, twisting them. That's what she did to you, didn't she, Polly? Only you killed her. Put him in jail. Or I'll kill him. Baker Canyon is out of my jurisdiction. If what you said happened in Baker Canyon, then I'm getting a circuit judge. I'm having a war on his shoulder. And he'd better be here when I get back. Are you threatening me, Mr. Canfield? I gotta find her, Patrick. She's alive. Give me two days. Just two days. 
Patrick. You mean to tell me he's dragged me here 20 miles over roads that aren't fit for a mule to travel and expects me to issue a warrant on a crime he can't prove? As a story, Judge Method. Why did you let him go? I told you this morning the case was out of my jurisdiction. If the girl's alive, Billy will find her. And if she's dead? What more you read then to issue a warrant? I'll have one for you in 10 minutes. Now, I'm a fee officer, Mr. Canfield, and I am fining you $5 for taking the court's time. Now, are you going to take me back or do I have to rent a horse? I'm not leaving. Then the fine goes up. To provide transportation. If ever I listen to a wild-eyed story like yours again, I ought to have my head examined. asking for any courtesy. Uh, just what are you asking for? You say this boy will find her. And how does he intend going about it? If your daughter used the name Lily Varnell, then somehow she must have known the woman in the past. You're saying my daughter knows a loose woman. I'm saying only that it's possible Billy might find her through Lily Varnell. If Phoebe isn't already dead. I don't think so. Mr. Canfield, she's running from you. And if she's to be found, Billy will have a better chance of finding her than you. In other words, you're telling me to stay in town. For everyone concerned. Yes. Well, that's one way for a father to find an erring daughter. Send a hoodlum after her. Get some sleep. You're so kind, Mr. Garrett. I told you she'd be here. A well, stage driver up at uh, Killian Station, he wasn't sure, you know. <laughs> Who is? So half a dozen people in this town like to lay hands on her in that crooked Farrow game. She ran out about four weeks ago. She did. You don't, you don't know where she... Uh... You sure seem anxious to see her. What'd she steal from you, boy? Well, I'm just looking for a, a girl she might know. You've got a drink on you? <sighs> Try Kelly's up at Greenbrier. Much right. Wait up, I walk home with you. How's you close up? Kind of late? Oh, I had the place locked up 20 minutes ago, and that man Canfield came in. Didn't want his wagon. Had me find a saddle for his horse. A saddle? Yeah, you'd think that devil was after him, the way he rode out of town. Did he say where he was going? No, he didn't say nothing. But he won't get very far with that miserable horse of his. Took the back alleyways, too. <laughs> on her. 
Fine feathers, perfume, everything goes with it. You got any money? No money. No time to waste. Looking for a girl with red hair and green eyes. So is every other man I ever met in my whole life. You gave me a lot of sweet talk, didn't you? What'd you give me this for? For a joke? I told you things about me, how I felt. I never told anybody. You're a liar. Billy, I had no choice. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're real good. I've never spent three days in all my life like I spent with you, Billy. I'll bet. You're wrong. I fell in love with you, Billy, just like you fell in love with me. Well, why did you lie to me? Because I had no choice. This happened to me once before, two years ago. Another man I met. We were going to be married. I found his body in an alleyway. The night before he was to take me away. He'd been shot in the back. And somebody had taken his gun. The day you saved my life in Baker Canyon, I found the gun in the bottom drawer of my father's bureau. For two years it had been there. My father had killed him. And I knew that he'd kill any man who ever came near me. So I ran away. And I ran my horse over the cliff deliberately. When I woke up in your arms, Billy, I knew that I wanted to live. But I knew that my father would follow me and find me with you. That's why I ran away from you. Why did you come to Lily Varnell? Because I'd heard of her and... I knew where she was. And it's the only way I could figure to get away from my father and be done with you. The men I'd meet in dance halls, I knew I'd never fall in love with. We're going to be married. I'm not afraid of your father. Can J.C. Summers do for you today, sir? Oh, just kind of looking around here. You, uh, you wouldn't happen to have any uh, dancing shoes, would you? I mean, something like a lady could get married in. Yeah. And maybe a pair of star heels for a gentleman? Yeah, it could be. I, I don't know. I, uh, show me what you got, will you? Yes, sir. from Galveston, our only import, straight from Paris. Yes, sir. Hand sewn, every inch a lady's slipper. How much? Five dollars. All right, sir. You just made yourself a deal. Uh, how about a pair of boots for a gentleman? Billy? Billy, is that you? No, it isn't, Billy. But he led me to you, Phoebe. Pa? Pa, don't hurt him. <gasps> Who's to blame a father 
for killing a man who brings his daughter to a place like this. Anita. Ah, ah, ah. 